change your thoughts, change your life. That's the principle. So if I change my thoughts, my life also changes. Yes. Okay, that's a good answer to start with. Now I'm thinking of people of how stressful life can be or you go to work every day and basically many people feel that their happiness is constantly challenged by things that happen in their life. It can be anything, daily life. So how can you use the principles of your course to change that? Um. I, d I didn't want to sound glib when I said um, yes, you know, just a straight yes, because it does take work, it takes effort, it takes patience, but the short answer is yes, it does. Um, just as we can get into habits of living that are stressful and, um, you know, taking away happiness, not giving it, so we can do the opposite of that. We can, we can choose a lifestyle that will support us in being happier. And that means changing our mind about how we live. Um, in many cases, um, it isn't radical what, what is what we suggest, um, but it is different to how you know, generally we are. When you're caught up in stress, you're one way. When you're on vacation, you're another way. When you're, you know, alone, you're different from when you're with a lot of people. So it's finding out how can I balance my life better to help me to do differently what I have to do anyway. Okay, so the yes was clear then. But you say it's not radical, but I suppose that you're going to give your students maybe some meditation or yoga exercises or whatever. Is that uh, difficult? No, I think that if you think exercise, because I, I'm afraid people will think, oh, I have to learn yoga to do this. It's not true. If you think of exercise in general, you can add yoga to that. Um, so some kind of movement, walking every day, um, or if you want to, running or whatever it is. But particularly meditation is a foundational tool. So you're going to teach us to meditate? Yes, yeah, as part of the program, yeah. And, and How many hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting because you add a little bit of meditation to a day, and I mean a little bit, five minutes, five minutes twice a day preferably, will do significant changes in your consciousness and your energy, enough that you will notice. And enough, you know, I'm thinking of people I've taught meditation to, enough so a doctor will notice. Um, Even a doctor? Yes. Wow. Because yeah. I remember someone who had high blood pressure, uh -huh. and her blood pressure went, she didn't tell me that in the class, but she let me know. Uh -huh. And um, she said after three days of five minutes twice a day, she went to the, she had to go to the doctor because her blood pressure was very high, like on a regular basis, maybe once a week. And the doctor said, what have you been doing? Your blood pressure's down 20 points. Wow, yeah. And this was like five, twice five minutes a day? I know, that's nothing. It's incredible. It? it is incredible. Yeah. It's, and it's doable. I think, and it's very that. doable. Yeah. Five minutes yeah. is very doable. Now, the, the point, let me just say, yes. some is better than none. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that makes it simpler yeah. when you think like that. But you know, let's imagine a more difficult case scenario. I'm not saying the worst, but people have to deal with, we all, at some time, we have to deal with loss. We yeah. may have health problems. We may divorce, yeah. financial problems. Now, how can I, you know, how can I use your, your the principles that you teach in order to be ready for that? Or when I'm in the middle of it? Right. Because right. someone might say, it's a really good question. Yeah. It's a very good question. Um, when, if we have in place, that's why I use the word lifestyle, if we have in place, it's sort of like if you have a relatively healthy lifestyle, you eat well, you exercise, once in a while you can feast. You know, you can go crazy and have all kinds of food that's not necessarily the best. But you know you'll go back to your lifestyle. That's the principle behind if you have tools and techniques and habits, actually, 
in place that you employ when everything is normal. I mean, as normal as normal is these days. I, I still mean busy and stressful and how people's lives are. Um, then when you come to crises or, you know, very, very challenging situations, you're less apt to be overwhelmed. It still is challenging, don't misunderstand me. All of us have to go through that. It's the human condition. But but you will have in place things that you have, you know, habitually created in your life that will help you and mm -hmm. sustain you. It's interesting because I hear you use the word habit a lot. Yes. So that plays an important role. Very in much happiness. so. Because because how we live, we can be very habitual without realizing it. I I was just um, for quite some time quite sick without knowing it. This is very recently. And I was taking all kinds of natural remedies and trying to work on it. It was bronchial. And, uh, you know, it would go away for a little bit and then come back worse, longer. And I had started to live with it. It had become habitual. Oh, okay, so this is how I sound now. This is how I am. But then it happened uh, enough that I was... I need something needs to be done. My voice keeps disappearing. My, you know, over and over, we, we suddenly realize maybe this doesn't have to be this way. And I went to a doctor and he gave me some very, very serious medication. And within two or three days, I was feeling significantly different. But we habitually just kind of accept, yeah. at least I did. Um, and I think we do. You know, if you, if you think you can't change something, it's hard to figure out what to do, and you have to keep going, so mm -hmm. you keep going. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so it, those are habits to me, and when we do something different, it's possible to really radically change your life because of it. Wonderful. Just one more question, or maybe one and then a little one. One could be, is it important to be religious? No. And the other one is how something about your life, has it worked in your life? Um, um, it is not necessary to be religious. You know, I would say that I'm a yogi, but that doesn't mean um, a religion, or and it doesn't necessarily mean yoga postures. It means a spiritual seeker, someone that considers body, mind, and soul, not just the body and the mind. And the soul is the sustainer of the body and the mind. And if that's taken care of, the body and the mind can go through a heck of a lot um, and still be okay, you know? And then you add to that the idea that happiness is a birthright spiritually, you know, then, then I want that. I want to find that and make it a part of my life. And that's what I did. I've been on the spiritual path for more than 40 years and it works. I, I, it's such a thrill and a privilege to be able to share things that do work yes. with, with people that we all need it. Human yes. beings need more joy, more peace, more, you know, beauty, more, less stress, less nervousness. Yes. And, and that's the promise of the spiritual teachings. And they are fulfilled if we pursue them. I think the main thing is to live them, to, to make them a priority and to live them. They work. They don't change the challenges of life. They change you so that you can meet the challenges of life and not be thrown away and overwhelmed by those challenges. Thank you very much.